Welcome to The Rocket Right Show, starring Hurricane Betsy Barnes and Dr. K. Solar, two busy blondes with their fingers on the pulse of all things Louisiana, events, health, leisure, entertainment, and more. It's The Rocket Right Show, and now, here's Betsy and Kay. And you know you're in the right place if you're ready to hang out with two busy blondes. And Lord knows we have been busy. I have been busy. I have made some like road miles. You have yeah. made some road miles. Mm-hmm. Nashville back, Nashville Florida. back, yeah. Florida. That's right. You never know where Kay's <laughs> going to be. Of course, you know, this time of year is really special for her because we're heading into her birthday season. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, that's right. That's right. My birthday season. I that's like that. Right. It's not even a birthday <laughs> month. It's a whole season. I like that, Betsy. Blondes <laughs> never celebrate just the day, just so you know. It's not just the week. It's the season. I so like get it. ready. I like it. So my sister girl and I are going to be uh, celebrating that next week. And so we're really looking forward to sharing with you some of the great people and some wonderful things that are going on in and around Louisiana. So we're glad that you wanted to hang tight with us. So we have a wonderful show and we're excited to share with you some news from in and around Louisiana. In a few minutes, we're going to have Susan Russell. She is a very passionate advocate for keeping Louisiana beautiful. You're going to be pretty wild by some of the things that she says. And then we have a few new doctors with Mary Absolutely. Bird Perkins. And talking about one of you know my topics that I always love to speak about is it is Cervical Cancer Awareness Month, so being an OBGYN, that's right up my alley. And we have Dr. Lauren and Sanjay Junasia that are uh, medical oncologists with Mary Bird Perkins. We always love to have docs from there uh, share information on the show. And, and then, we don't often get a husband-wife duo. I know. I know. And, and, so and, and you know, a, being that I'm one, I kind of like that. That's right. You know? Exactly. I might and have some questions husband. for them. You know, right. been there, done that. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and then David Bournet, you got a chance to catch yes. up with him at the Home for the Holiday Show, which I missed. So I can't wait uh, to see what y'all chatted about. You know, I love David Bournet's lyrics, and I wish I could sing because I love, he has very clever lyrics, and I like his songs. And so I enjoyed my conversation with him that we'll share with you. But first, we wanted to talk about a couple of things around the state. So, as you know, we are heard in Natchez, Faraday, Vidalia, going into Mississippi, in that part of Louisiana, up in that neck of the woods. And our friend Jim Bob Allgood, who owns Mid South Broadcasting, Miss Lou Media, Miss Lou Tours, and who is a reality star for the last 22 years on uh, Redneck Adventures. Mm, he yeah. actually has people in Australia and Africa that follow him on I Redneck know. Adventures. And he's going to take us on one of them Redneck Adventures. I I've know, been on a redneck days. adventure with him. We went bass fishing. We caught a lot. He was fun. Okay. Well, that yeah, it was, cool. it was a lot of fun. Yeah. And so this past week, I had the privilege of being with he and Nashville singer, songwriter, performer, uh, Rick Revel, who is has been known as Mr. History. And he also has the History Highway television program. And so I was able to go and be with them for a press conference. And so we're going to show you a little bit about that with the Vidalia May. Buzz Craft. Now, this is really important because the film industry is a huge driver as to why people choose to come to Louisiana to enjoy what we know is the best food, people, culture. And so we want to play a little bit of that press conference for you because it's really important that we have new programs and new television shows, but we're thankful that Jim Bob Allgood has partnered with us for mm-hmm. the last year and a half or so and broadcast our show on two radio stations there, the River 107.1 and the Gator 104.7. So you can hear us every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. That's on why we're boat. on the go. We're just all we're over the, the place. Go. Well, I want to see, because I know that you represented the lieutenant governor at this I uh, press conference. So can we roll that uh, video of the press conference now and see a little behind the scenes with Bess? Hey, folks, Jim Bob, Redneck Adventures, Mid-South Broadcasting, and American Ramblers. We are proud to uh, be bringing you one of the most awesome new traveling great TV shows. Hey, behind me is a uh, plethora of great folks. I'm going to let them step up to the mic and uh, introduce themselves and uh, say a few words, so y'all stay tuned. My name's Rick Revel. A lot of you know me as Mr. History on History Highway. Jimmy Allgood gave me the opportunity to show my television nationwide on Roku, and we've developed quite a friendship and relationship. We've had the opportunity to pitch some ideas around and kind of kick them real hard and 
came up with this idea of American Ramblers. So, you know, we want to show the greatness of America. We don't want to show the things that, you know, if you watch the news, you get depressed. We want to show you the good side of America. We want to show you the greater parts of America. And it started here in Natchez, a city, a town, a settlement, over 300 years old on the Mississippi, probably the oldest existing settlement on the river, about two years older than New Orleans. So it's, it's amazing the history that's here. So as a history nut, that's what I enjoy. I enjoy talking about America's history, its story. So when we take that story and we bring it to the rest of the world, and we become proud of America again, let's get out and see America. See, American Ramblers is about us going around seeing the great things that's in this country, but we want you to also see these things. We want you to reconnect to America. We want you to see what makes us great and what has made us the greatest nation of all times. So, American Ramblers, make sure you watch it. Because if you miss a single episode, you'll miss best book of what makes America work. Hello America, I want to tell you I am so excited that American Ramblers has chosen the Miss Lou uh, Natchez, Mississippi, today, Louisiana, to start a program that I think is going to be something that our citizens in the, in the United States need to hear right now. And that's to see small town America and that look, there's a lot of good things going on in our country that people aren't talking about. So I want you to be sure that you're going to follow every episode of these two old southern boys that's going to travel the, the United States and show everybody the good part that's still here in America. Let's not watch all this, this nastiness going on. There's good people in our community, Bidet, Louisiana, on behalf of those citizens. We are a wonderful community, a safe community. We have so much to offer. We're right here in the middle of the sportsman's paradise. Come check us out, but I want you to follow these guys because they really have a, a, an important message that our country needs to hear right now and see small town America that's doing it right. And I want to thank them, and I want to thank our Lieutenant Governor, Billy Nungap, for doing it again. A wonderful, wonderful steward for the state of Louisiana and promoting tourism. I love all the slogans that's come out of his office. Louisiana where you can come feed your soul, what a saying, and also staycations in Louisiana, all of those things are very important. And after these guys do their tour and show you part of our, our Miss Lou area, you're gonna agree. Thank you so much. And so you could tell it was a little windy. That's an yes, all the sure scenes. Yes, it sure was. And, and your actual hair wasn't like all like, all like this, <laughs> like mine would have been. <laughs> You did really good, Bet. <laughs> I, I got to tell you, we are going to be hitting the road, and we're going to be going to small communities, and we're going to tell about the people there that have a really cool story, their passion and all that. But I'll tell you, there's some things going on all around Louisiana. We have motivated people to bring people to visit. And so we need to all do that. And we're going to talk with Susan Russell in a minute about keeping Louisiana beautiful. We got a little cleaning up to do before company comes. I'm just going to tell you. Mm. <clears throat> and one thing that's really important that I want to make sure you know, Rex, the Mardi Gras organization of Rex is 150 years old. And there is an incredible exhibit that's opening up on February 1st. At, and that's a Tuesday. My birthday. The, your birthday. By the saying. way, her birthday. Feel free to send <laughs> gifts. <laughs> Um, but the Rex exhibit is going to be phenomenal, celebrating 150 years of the School of Design at the Presbyterian in Jackson Square. You need to go see that. There's also two civil rights marker unveilings, one at McDonough 19 in New Orleans and the other one at Camp Beauregard, honoring the 761st Battalion. Those are going to be phenomenal things happening in the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And of course, we got Jazz Fest. We got French Quarter Fest. And the uh, Louisiana Fair and Festivals Convention is exactly. happening uh, this next week where all the fair and festivals come together. And hopefully they're all going to have a big year yeah. uh, coming out Because the money COVID. stays in local. Kinda, a lot of them didn't happen and went away. And so yeah. want to support those. Well, the money stays in local communities. And that's why we need the fair and festivals to come back. So we're going to be talking about your health. We're going to be talking about cleaning up. And we're going to talk about some good time music. So you need to just hang with us, right? Absolutely. Don't be going nowhere. 
That's right. Call Unless a friend. you're like going somewhere we told you to go, right? <laughs> That's right. Call a friend. Tell them they need to come see you in Louisiana. Come down for Mardi Gras. If New Orleans is too fast and too busy for you, there's 75, literally 75 par- parades all around the state. Les le bon temps roule, Kay. Uh-huh. For uh-huh. sure. That's right. We're going to have a good time. So hang with us. We're going to be right back on Rocket Right with Hurricane Betsy Barnes and Dr. K. Birthday Solar. <laughs> <laughs> There's a joy of life you'll find only in Louisiana. A spirit of celebration that takes your senses places they've never been before. Where expressions of joy are an art form and our way of life. Where an abundance of good food, good times, and great music means there's more than enough to go around. Come one, come y'all. Come feed your soul in Louisiana. I'm John Goodman inviting you to visit louisianatravel.com and plan your getaway today. The use of opioids and addiction to opioids is on the rise, especially in Louisiana, and I wanted to be a part of the solution. If you have a family member or loved one that you are concerned about with regard to opioid use, please call my clinic, Advantage Health Solutions. You can speak with my nurse or you can speak with myself, and we will talk to you about how to get that person into treatment, and we'll tailor what we do to your needs, and we'll do what we can to get your loved one in treatment and onto the path to health. Red Stick Music, Baton Rouge's live music calendar since 2014. With a full calendar available on the website 24-7. Clickable links to artists and venues. View the entire weekend lineup at a glance and plan your outings with your friends. View professional recordings of local live musicians. Watch interviews with people in our music community and find additional resources. Red Stick Music, Baton Rouge's live music calendar. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser of the great state of Louisiana. Hurricane Ida has brought great devastation to our community. In time of need, Louisianans always step up and help their neighbor. This time is no different. We'll help our neighbors and friends get back as we always do. If you need help or know of someone that needs help or would like to volunteer or make a donation, go to volunteerlouisiana.gov. We are Louisiana strong. Thank you. Since the early 1800s, the Selassie family has played a significant role in the retail industry in Louisiana. Stuart Selassie has achieved the Certified Diamond Graduate designation from the prestigious Gemological Institute of America. What that means to you, whether it's appraisals, design, build, repair, or diamond sales, you have an expert you can count on. At Selassie's, you make all the right choices. Selassie Jewelry and Fine Gifts, in the heart of the Denham Springs Antique District. Find them on Facebook. Are you a business owner that could use just one more customer? Those empty tables, vacant appointments, idle employees, and expired merchandise are missed opportunities. What if there were a community that connects you to high value and motivated customers, giving you a competitive edge in the marketplace and increasing your revenue? Introducing Partners One. You keep doing what you do best, taking care of your customers, and we'll do what we do best, sending you new customers to take care of. Call us today to find out how Partners One can work for your business. All right, y'all, I'm super excited to introduce you to Susan Russell. You talk about a motivated, passionate Louisiana woman. Let me tell you something. If you have trash sitting around your yard, you might find Susan out in your front yard picking it up. No, she really has done a phenomenal job for several years with Keep Louisiana Beautiful. This is her mission. It is her calling. It is her passion. And she has gotten other people involved. And now... Governor John Bell Edwards has just recently added Susan to the task force, a statewide task force, to do exactly what she set out to do in the beginning 
which was to keep Louisiana beautiful and clean. Thank you so much for coming from Madisonville <laughs> so you could come be with us and share your mission and your passion. Oh, I love it to be uh, sandwiched between two beautiful blondes <laughs> on, you know, on a, a weeknight. I like to talk trash. That's right. Let's talk, <laughs> talk trash. trash. Let's I love do it. it. Well, you know, we need we need to be talking trash because yeah. all of us see it all the time. Even my husband just the other day was like, "What kind of people like throw trash in our neighborhood?" Yeah. I right. mean, they're not even on the highway pitching it out. It has to be somebody that's living or visiting someone in the neighborhood. I mean, who who does that? But people do that, and you see it all over the place. And it's so which hard to comprehend, right? It like, is what hard is the to mindset comprehend. There, and you know, I tell people we're trying to change people's attitudes, behaviors, and culture. It is something that has been accepted for way too long. And, mm -hmm. and it's not accepted in other states to the no, degree it is here. Absolutely Because when, not. We, when I travel, like for example, I love North Carolina. It is a 911 emergency if you got trash on the side of the road. Their attitude toward recycling and trash is totally different than ours. Our tolerance is you know, high and our expectation is low. That's become the norm. And we're setting out to change that because I don't think Louisiana has been as littered and trashy as it is now. It's at an mm -hmm. all time high. We can't so. blame it all on storms. No, you, no. you can't. And you know, it, it really, we'll see a difference when we all come together. So there's right. a role of course in the private sector, the public sector, nonprofits, and of course every citizen. So when we all come together and take on this collectively work together we'll start to see a change and that's why you mentioned about the governor the lieutenant governor coming together yes. first time in Louisiana's history that we have had them stand in unison you know to declare cleaning up Louisiana priority so, so we're super excited about so that previously well keep Louisiana beautiful as an organization it, you are truly passionate about it, and you've educated me on so many different aspects of things that have affected our state that I really wasn't aware of mm -hmm. the really enormous monetary cost. But your department was under the Department of Education, and then it recently moved under the Lieutenant Governor's Office, and he's been an advocate for this for years. For years. Mm -hmm. This isn't just something that, that happened so you know, this he's past the year. of yeah. the task force. Louisiana, yeah. Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser mm -hmm. is now chairing 26 people, of which you're probably the most vocal advocate. And you've gotten so many other people involved. They're probably going to get really tired of seeing and hearing from me because well, I'm going to hold some. I'm going to be a, a taskmaster. If they clean but. it up, <laughs> it doesn't matter. But it, but it really, it is like I mentioned. It, it really is the first time we've had a governor and lieutenant governor say, "Enough's enough. We have to do something." Right. Because it's it's a huge problem. We can't just say that it's you know er, the citizens who are throwing things out the window. Clearly, that's happening. That has to stop. Yes. But we have to look at enforcement we have to look at education we have to look at infrastructure that support clean communities citizen behavior what we need is to really build all of that and i think that's what the task force will be tasked with you've got some big names on mm -hmm. this task force yes yes so you've got of course jay darden is the commissioner of administration he's on the task force you have secretary of transportation sean wilson which of course absolutely there are so many people that throw trash out the window which we already talked about I have a little problem with and I have been known to like <laughs> you know accelerate up and fuss at people I have to be careful about that yes you do um, you've got <laughs> Colonel Lamar Davis with the Department of Public Safety and Corrections you've got the mayor of East Baton Rouge Parish on there you've got the Point Capiz Sheriff Renee Thibodeau there is a list of people who it's really a, truly it's care a nice about, cross section it really but, is but it's a reflection on all of us mm -hmm. so how much money does this cost the state of Louisiana to pick up the trash and volunteers. I want you to talk about the volunteers. Sure, sure. Because that is who makes this happen. And you can become a volunteer. I'm a volunteer. Many, many we people talk to. about fun, get together, talk trash, yeah. remove some trash. Talk about the financial impact on Louisiana. Yeah, so we did a study some years ago. So at the time, we, we discovered that about $40 million in litter abatement and removal that's the cost that of is it crazy. and that was that's, years that's ago just think of what else more. that could be used for exactly i mean so we crazy. did we did a, a study a survey with local and parish and state entities asking them these questions and so you know let's 
talk about preventative measures and policies and procedures that support clean communities so we can take some of that money and spend it on things that we really, you know, would be better used, like education. Education, <laughs> elevate, <laughs> yes, elevate, elevate ourselves by, yeah. by cleaning yeah. up and making a, a you know, this affects property values, quality yeah. of life, everything. so many things. Everything. But you know, there there's there is some good news, right? And so our organization, we are a statewide organization, and our role is really to support local communities because change happens at that local level right. mm -hmm. like this, right? And so we provide education, training, resources, programs, grants to help them build capacity so that they can address the issues. And so we have 39 affiliates, but we have partners throughout the state. And as much as we are proud of the work that we're doing, and I'll go ahead and read you some of our Please numbers. Please do, because these are so, fantastic. So, you know, last year we had over 16,000 volunteers, and that was a value of a workforce of $1.5 million, and that's huge. Thank you, you if know? you were a part of Absolutely. that. If you were one of those, thank you for caring about our state and about us enough to make a difference. That's the backbone of the organization, and they helped with 400 and. 37 waterway and roadway cleanups. They uh, collected 2.5 recyclables and 2.5 tons? 2.5 million, million pounds of recyclables. Thank wow. you. Uh, 282 tons of litter removed just from the roadways. And so I can go that on and on and on. It, 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 it's it's just hard to even fathom yeah. that much. But when you ride around and you see it, everywhere you turn you can imagine if it was all raked up together how much it would be and so as you know i'm proud of these you know quarter of a million participants so these are people have participated in these collections or in these programs mm -hmm. one way or the other and as great of a job that we're doing we're struggling right mm -hmm. this is just yeah. scratching the surface that's right because we cannot do this on the backs of volunteers and citizens. Right. We need all the segments of our community working together, like I mentioned when we first started yes. talking. And I think this task force will identify that. You know, What are other states doing that we're not doing? What are the best practices? So we're taking a look at Tennessee and Texas and, and South Carolina and some of the other states, and we will examine their best practices and their policies and how they fund this so that we can say, you know, what are they doing that we're not doing? What is it that we need to do? Let's bridge that gap. And so I think there used to be fear of fines if, if, we're if not you were enforcing. tossing something out of the car. And, as and a state, granted, it's time there's we so enforce. much other crime going on that it's hard to say, well, mm -hmm. Somebody's gonna get you for like throwing, you know, a drink cup out of your window. So nobody, they're not worried about that. Granted, mm -hmm. mentally, you ought to not want to do that. So that's a conversation with it's getting people honor. to like, it's, it's, it's not do that. Do you but, have any honor about where you are and who you are? Yeah. And the place where you live. Do you do you have any honor or respect for what people are trying to build up instead of tear yeah. down? And it's hard for, you know, folks like us, right? We, we kind of think the same and have the same values, right. right? And so we don't need enforcement in our lives, right? Because we right. are well, law-abiding people. The window. Right. But yeah. unfortunately, some people, that will be what it takes for them to change. They're right. not going to listen to the please don't litter signs, right? Well, and right. Things. well there's so, cameras everywhere. So perhaps if the cameras were used for enforcement, that might be a positive. Because if you get fined $500 for throwing a cup out of a window, you might not do it again. Well, well and there's some people who actually <clears throat> might do it again. Dump yeah. the, an entire garbage bag yeah. out of their window, which is very hard to imagine. Yeah. But yes. I, I think that enforcement will be looked at very seriously. We do have state police, we have wildlife and fisheries, we have. Um, the Sheriff's Association, Department of Corrections, mm -hmm. represented on this task force. I and I so think everybody knows that that is, these are all pieces to right. the puzzle. We're not going to mm -hmm. enforce our way completely out of this problem. It's a piece of the puzzle. It's a culture. It's an education issue. Mm -hmm. It's we a need, resource we issue. We need to make societal shifts in behaviors, just like what was done with seatbelts, the same thing that was done with drinking and driving. You know, right. my kids have never been in a car without a seatbelt. I grew up never wearing a seatbelt. Right. And my, we had the arm. Yeah. My, old, <laughs> my older kids, they, uh, they do designated drivers or call Ubers, you yes. know. So that's what we need to do 
with I agree littering. With you. I agree with you. Susan mm-hmm. Russell, keeping Louisiana beautiful. I want you to come back. I'll be back. I want you to share closer to the, some of the different things that you have going on throughout the year. But Absolutely. thank you. How can thank people you. find you? Keep Louisiana beautiful. Dot org. Dot org. Yep. Keep Louisiana beautiful. Come volunteer. Org. Join us. Yeah, I challenge you to come volunteer. We're going to be right back, and we're going to be talking with a couple of doctors that you need to meet, because who knows, you might need their help. We'll be right back. My biggest concern was my family, and being able to see me come home every day and know everything is going to be okay. I felt comfortable that I was being treated by some of the best. There were some scary points along the way, but um, it's just kind of like been a little blip in the road. Money, wellness, fun. Rocket Ripe Radio takes you all across Louisiana and the nation with guests who live life to the fullest. I'm Hurricane Betsy Barnes. I'm Dr. K. Solar. You're going to love it. Join us every week when we cover everything under the sun. Live and learn with the Wright Sisters. Politics. Health. Music and entertainment. Local Langnet. Rocket Ripe Radio. You're going to love it. Hi, I'm Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser of the great state of Louisiana. Hurricane Ida has brought great devastation to our community. In time of need, Louisianans always step up and help their neighbor. This time is no different. We'll help our neighbors and friends get back as we always do. If you need help or know of someone that needs help or would like to volunteer or make a donation, go to volunteerlouisiana.gov. We are Louisiana strong. Thank you. Red Stick Music, Baton Rouge's live music calendar since 2014, with a full calendar available on the website 24-7. Clickable links to artists and venues. View the entire weekend lineup at a glance and plan your outings with your friends. View professional recordings of local live musicians. Watch interviews with people in our music community and find additional resources. Red Stick Music, Baton Rouge's live music calendar. Whitetail Properties is not your average real estate company. Land specialist and MSU alum Jeff Taylor in Mississippi and LSU fan realtor Cade Taylor have teamed up. Their sole purpose is uniting buyers and sellers of recreational land. If you're interested in hunting, ranch, investment, and timber properties, Whitetail Properties experts have the right real estate for you. Call Jeff Taylor, 601-248-9433 or Cade Taylor, 225-719-0495 or visit whitetailproperties.com. At Hightower Dental Concepts, we take a compassionate approach to family dentistry. Our goal is to make your dental experience comfortable and informative so you can make the best dental care decisions for you and your family. We're welcoming new patients to our dental family at Essen and Perkins, and we look forward to meeting you soon at Hightower Dental Concepts. Call us today at 769-0031 or request your appointment at info at dentalconceptsbr.com. There's a joy of life you'll find only in Louisiana. A spirit of celebration that takes your senses places they've never been before. Where expressions of joy are an art form and our way of life. Where an abundance of good food, good times, and great music means there's more than enough to go around. Come one, come y'all. Come feed your soul in Louisiana. I'm John Goodman inviting you to visit louisianatravel.com and plan your getaway today. Back with the Rocket Right Show, I'm Dr. K. Sellar in the house with Hurricane Betsy Barnes. And in our medical segment, we are so excited to have with us Dr. Sanjay Janasia and Dr. Lauren Janasia. And you did notice they have the same last name. <laughs> and um, so we're excited to have both of y'all. Uh, you're at Mary Bird Perkins uh, Cancer Center and are both medical oncologists. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. yeah, I know that my husband and I are both OBGYN. We mentioned that. And everybody was like, so did y'all meet during your training? Because otherwise you probably wouldn't pick somebody in the same specialty. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> it was yeah, it's certainly not with OBGYN. Yeah, that's, right. true. that's true. <laughs> so with all that call and stuff way back then. So, But anyway, so January is Cervical Cancer Awareness Month, something I know a little bit about. Yes. Uh, thank goodness we usually pick those up as precancerous that's seizures right. before we have to send them off to you guys. That's but right. let's talk a little bit about um, what is cervical cancer? Because sometimes even, you know, people are like, which part of me is that? What is what is that? And uh, we'll talk about that first and then a little bit about what are some of the symptoms. Right. So cervical cancer is a cancer that starts, of course, on the cervix. And the cervix is basically the opening or the bottom part of the uterus. Right. The part that dilates when the baby That's comes right. out. That's right. That's so. right. And so uh, cervical cancer develops usually over some time. And if patients are good and seeing their ob like you said, usually it's picked up as a precancer. Right. Um, the important thing about cervical cancer is, of course, following with your gynecologist, getting your pap smears. Um, but then now, of course, is getting your HPV vaccine. Yes, and uh, we've known for a really long time that cervical cancers are related to HPV. Uh, and as we talk about vaccines, it's been out for a while. Right. Uh, very safe. It first was just recommended for young girls and now is also recommended for boys as well. And initially, a lot of women were like, well, you know, my daughter's not sexually active. I don't think she needs to, to get it. Well, look, you're supposed to get it before that happens. That's right. That's where you get the prevention. <laughs> exactly. So it's just kind of like a lot of the other vaccines, like with hepatitis and stuff, you know, it's a newborn vaccine. We're trying to get rid of that. Right, exactly. So, uh, you, you have to get the vaccine before you become sexually active because HPV is so common. Uh, as you know, it's the most common sexually transmitted disease that you can get. And so by the time you know, adolescents or, you know, even in their 20s start having sex, that's when you're you're going to pick up that virus. Right. And there's so many different strains and it has right. no symptoms. So a lot of times no one knows until they come in and they have that abnormal hap smear, which then could be precancerous and hopefully not cancer. Um, let's talk a little bit about symptoms because I think, you know, a lot of times they're are no symptoms until it's advanced. For, for and, advanced. And a lot of right. people yes. are behind on their annuals because of COVID. Right. And so now would be a time to encourage a woman that you love, anyone of any age that's female, to go get checked. That's yeah. right. And so, I think a lot of times what happens too is we're so, um, you know, younger, younger patients, of course, they're on birth control or they're, you know, getting pregnant and they're good about seeing the gynecologist. But as you know, sometimes as women get a little older, they think, uh, I don't need to see the gynecologist anymore. Mm -hmm. And really, too, that's the time to see because a lot of times if you've had HPV for a while, that's when it really is turning into a cancer. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so let's go over some of those symptoms because sometimes women they come up with reasons why they might be having some of those symptoms. Exactly. And certainly there's plenty of benign things that could cause a, a, a lot of the, right. the, the symptoms, but something to, to go look, look, look at. So right. one of that is yes. irregular so, bleeding. Mm -hmm. You go ahead, run down that. <laughs> We're going to let you speak. Well, the, he likes to speak over well, there. <laughs> appropriately, it's definitely, you know, a, a female dominant cancer, but it, the important thing is, so yeah, symptoms, if you have symptoms, it's going to be, especially if you have bleeding after, uh, you know, you've stopped having your cycles, that's concerning, right? It's abnormal. Absolutely. It is not because your grandma, granddaughter moved into the house and uh -huh. started right. your period. Right. I've heard that before. I've heard everything <laughs> crazy that people try oh, to no. rationalize. But if you stopped having cycles and you're an older woman, you should never bleed. And if so, you guys right. right. check it out. Exactly. And even if it's something like, oh, well, you know, we just had intercourse and stuff. If that wasn't the norm and it is now, then that's something concerning either for your right. you know uterine or cervical um, pain you know bleeding but the key is and I just want to touch on on the concept of screening so I was at a wedding and somebody said well you know I'm kind of traditional if I have cancer I, I don't want to know about it right but that's I just want to you know take take the course as it comes but what screening is is identifying something before it becomes 100%. cancer that's your that's that's the key so our bodies are always like fighting you know cells that are normal cells that have, are trying to go rogue and they kill them yes. so we've all we've all cured cancers throughout our lifetimes right and that's why we learned a lot with HIV before we could treat it when the immune system was down we learned so much about cancers and what comes out when we right. see the immune system is gone 
But what you want to do is, before you get those multiple mutations, you want to see just a couple that look kind of funky and then say, this is not right. Let's just take out all of those. Let's just remove all the ones that got these mutations over years and years, 90% plus, which is HPV. You know, somebody said, I could take out 90% of the causes of pancreatic cancer. Do you want this vaccine? I mean, we would be lining up, right? Pancreatic right. cancer is terrifying. That's what this offers. That's why they say it's preventable. Absolutely. And, and I always told, told women, it, it's like nobody really should get cervical exactly. cancer. Right. With the vaccine and getting appropriate screening, no one should come in and have advanced cervical cancer. Right. Because even if they get mutations, it's going to be picked up precancerous, exactly. which can be easily treated. So the whole thing is screening. Because it's slow. You know, that's not always the case with mammograms. You can get it in you know, a year's time and, and other things. But this one, it truly is, you know, silver lining. It just takes a while. Like, you have to have a series over several years before you get there. So if you're listening and you're like, well, it's been about five or six years, there's a little anxiety. It's not a common cancer. Louisiana is right. sixth in the country of the highest cases. But overall, it's just very unlikely when you go, it'll be positive. Right. And that's why getting that peace of mind to go and say, oh, I got it tested and I'm good. That's yeah. a great feeling. Absolutely. And statistically, right. it's just unlikely you'll have something abnormal. So you should go and you can say, I'm good for three years, you know? Yeah. Yes. And risk factors. We mentioned HPV, mm -hmm. but a lot of women don't realize smoking. Yeah. Yes, smoking. Yes. And if you have HPV and you uh, smoke, yes. just ca ca right. a catalyst. Exactly. Make sure you're getting your pap smears, for and, sure. And a lot of my patients, when they would have precancer cells, they'd say, what can I do so that this doesn't recur right. and turn back in, and, and, and progress to cancer down the road? And if they were a smoker, it's like the biggest thing Stop you can do smoking. is quit smoking. Mm -hmm. And they cannot relate and say, how what's, what's the smoking other thing? has <laughs> to do yeah. um, with cervical cancer, because they only think about it with lung cancer right. and you know, mouth cancers, right. but it's it's definitely connected. Oh, mouth there. cancer. So yeah, head and neck. That's why men, you know, one who can transmit it, but head and neck cancer is, it's, you know, it's not fun to treat. It's radiation in places yeah. that you really don't want to be dry, and and they've gone way up with because of HPV. But then now that people are getting the vaccines, you know, we were at an age we didn't. It came out after, so you can right. actually get it up to 45. If you're female and you're single and and you hadn't gotten it before and you have multiple partners, you still want to get it in the chance that you don't have it because it's just so effective. So why? Well, 45. Why is 45 kind of the cutoff? I'm just curious. So, so the guidelines are definitely for women 11. Age 11 is when you can start to get the vaccine, and up until you're 21 or 26. But after that, you know, if you're sexually active, the chance of you getting HPV because HPV is so common is pretty high, and so the mm -hmm. vaccine is probably not as effective because you've already been exposed. Or and that too, it just takes so many years that like mm -hmm. you really want to make sure you know, you just took care of it beforehand. And somebody's probably thinking like, why does a virus like cause cancer? So we know viruses cause cancer a lot and it's, mm -hmm. this is gonna be scary, but it's because they mess with your DNA of your normal cells. They get in there and say, I'm gonna turn on an on switch and just kind of make it, you know, again, I say sketchy, but, but it's true, that's what viruses do. And, um, and then if you could block that from happening, you know, you don't have that kind of funky kind of characteristics on any yeah. cell. This is not just cervical, this is anything really. But I, I really do love that you're so comfortable talking about it. And I think so many men are so uncomfortable talking about anything gynecological, anything that could affect a woman's health in such a serious way. They're just not comfortable talking about mm -hmm. it. So it's so great to hear you talk about it so comfortably. And I hope that encourages a lot of you fellas right. to ask questions and talk about it and find out so you can help the women in your life that you love, your mom, your sister, your wife, your girlfriend, your lover, your younger daughter who needs to be cared for right. in the way that she's thinking about her health long term. And we know the vaccine is safe. Get your vaccines. And like you said, all the women in your life, they need to see their gynecologist and get their pap smears. You could literally save someone's life by just nudging them. You know, you're getting drinks one night or having dinner and be like, by the way, did you get my pap smear? I just got to ask. Like, cause <laughs> it really could just make a, it could change the entire, entire course of their life. And it's your mammogram while you're at it. Yeah. yeah. And if it's advanced, it's very difficult to treat. Like, that's yes. the unfortunate thing. It's like, it's so preventable, but then it's not very forgiving when it is advanced. Right. And, you know, we don't have very much time left so we are 100 percent going to have to have you guys back because yes. i i really want to cover screening because that confuses a lot of women with all these new guidelines out there so make sure that you're up to date on your pap smears seeing your physician on an annual basis so you'll know if you're up to date and where should folks go mary bird 
marybird.com.org is where you can get a lot of information and the pavilion at women's you know that they navigate everything for you so it's a one stop you know shop you get your pap smear you get referred to the surgeon you have a navigator that coordinates things for you we know how fragmented healthcare is and you have appointments here and there and nobody talks at the pavilion you get all of that at one place yes. and then you can also see us at Essen or in Baton Rouge General yes well thank y'all so much for joining us we're going to have them back husband and wife duo Dr. <laughs> Junasia that's right and uh, stay put because we got some music coming up next for you thank you thank you At Hightower Dental Concepts, we take a compassionate approach to family dentistry. Our goal is to make your dental experience comfortable and informative so you can make the best dental care decisions for you and your family. We're welcoming new patients to our dental family at Essen and Perkins, and we look forward to meeting you soon at Hightower Dental Concepts. Call us today at 769-0031 or request your appointment at info at dentalconceptsbr.com. Some call it joie de vie, the joy of life. In Louisiana, it's our way of life. From music that shakes up your senses to food that wakes up your palate. That joy vibrates in every note we play and spices up every meal we serve. So come live life to the fullest. Come one, come y'all, come feed your soul in Louisiana. I'm Sean Ardway inviting you to plan your trip at louisianatravel.com. Since the early 1800s, the Selassie family has played a significant role in the retail industry in Louisiana. Stuart Selassie has achieved the Certified Diamond Graduate designation from the prestigious Gemological Institute of America. What that means to you, whether it's appraisals, design, build, repair, or diamond sales, you have an expert you can count on. At Selassie's, you make all the right choices. Selassie Jewelry and Fine Gifts, in the heart of the Denham Springs Antique District. Find them on Facebook. The use of opioids in addition to opioids is on the rise, especially in Louisiana, and I wanted to be a part of the solution. If you have a family member or loved one that you are concerned about with regard to opioid use, please call my clinic, Advantage Health Solutions. You can speak with my nurse or you can speak with myself, and we will talk to you about how to get that person into treatment, and we'll tailor what we do to your needs, and we'll do what we can to get your loved one in treatment and onto the path to health. Whitetail Properties is not your average real estate company. Land specialist and MSU alum Jeff Taylor in Mississippi and LSU fan realtor Kay Taylor have teamed up. Their sole purpose is uniting buyers and sellers of recreational land. If you're interested in hunting, ranch, investment, and timber properties, Whitetail Properties experts have the right real estate for you. Call Jeff Taylor, 601-248-9433 or Kay Taylor, 225-719-0495 or visit whitetailproperties.com. I had a meeting with Dr. Barfield and it kind of just hit me. It probably is cancer. After the surgery, I wasn't scared anymore. I was looking forward to getting started with chemo. Not one time did I get a nurse in a bad mood. I was here for five hours at a time and I did not dread coming. To get people from around the country to come to Baton Rouge, and that says a lot right there. That this is place is cutting edge. Back with the Rocket Right Show. That's right. <laughs> There's <laughs> Betsy. She was missing me so much. Dr. K, Hurricane Betsy Barnes. I, I, and look, I was missing you when wasn't you Wasn't you missing me? We have I fun know, when we're together. You know, two busy blondes. Not everybody can hang with us. Not everybody can keep up. <laughs> We've been so busy, but we've been going in different directions. Yes. And I had to miss the annual Home for the Holiday show. Betts was there. And, uh, and this was Kay's show. This is her whole thing, but... She was just being cautious from a little Thought exposure. Thought I might have had the COVID or flu, but I didn't. <clears throat> I was negative. But yes. anyway, stayed home anyway, and you got to chat with some of the folks there. And um, I think you have your interview clip of yes. talking with David Borne. I and love the Home for the Holidays show. I love the Third Street Songwriters Festival. I love all the music that Kay brings into my life. I truly, truly do. It's a blessing to me. So eight years of blessing me. 
And I appreciate that so much. And so David Bournet is one of the singer songwriters from Baton Rouge. You might recognize his name. His dad is Dan Bournet, was the voice of the LSU Tigers forever. And he just has a very clever yeah. way of putting words together. So we just want you to hear some of his music. And here is my interview with David Bournet from the Home for the Holidays show. And you're going to love his music. We're so glad that you could hang with us a little bit. You know how we love our Louisiana musicians. We have a little extra affection for those that are from Baton Rouge. And so if you've not heard him before, you need to hear him. It's David Bournet from Baton Rouge. We appreciate so much a few minutes of your time between sound checks and the show for the Manship Theater um, Home for the Holidays. I think you've, you've really performed in every one of these for 12 years. I don't think I was in the first one. My, so, so 11 years. Uh, 11 years, which seems wild. I didn't, and last year I got COVID, so I couldn't come, and I had to have eye surgery. So I, this, I, I was having cataract surgery, like in early December, but yeah. then I got COVID and it got pushed back to like, I guess December 24th, I did it Christmas Eve. Yeah. I couldn't. Uh, well, that's the only, the only excuse, two. that's the only way we could excuse you for not being here. COVID so and cataract surgery. Yeah, yeah, yeah those good, are good excuses. It was legit. Yeah, yeah it was legit. <laughs> so this year, we know that it's going to be a great performance, and you have some songs that I really, truly love. I find myself sometimes singing, you know, um, Where You Belong is one of my very, very favorites. Um, and you co-wrote that with Red Anthony Glenn Meyer. Correct. Was there anybody else that co-wrote that with yes, you? Yes, it was our friend uh, D. Vincent Williams is his name. And D was um, one of those first really successful national songwriters that um, would come into Losers where Red and I were in this house band for a year. Red, a lot more years than me. He was there first. And he got me this gig. So we were in the Losers band. And this guy, D. Vincent Williams, had, uh, would get up and sit in. And he wrote... Um, uh, I'm moving on by Rascal Flatts was his wow. big hit, which is just That's one of the greatest hit. songs. Yeah, that, my family loved that song, and he was kind of one of those first people I, who would bug us to co-write. And I was scared of co-writing because I was very much had this imposter complex of like I don't deserve <laughs> to be there. And D, he did it for us. He brought us in the room, and we got to write that song, which Red will be playing tonight, and I'll be singing harmony. So we're going to switch. I recorded it, but we're going to switch it out tonight, which will be fun. Well, I love the way your voices sound together, or the way you blend and harmonize together. So um, one of the things that I really wanted to ask you about was the way that you're songwriting now, and how that has changed from the time you got to Nashville, and you've been there for how many years? Uh, 11 years. 11 years, and you recently got married. Yes. Congratulations thank again. You, thank you, thank you. So as as you've evolved in you know the way that you write music, the way you approach music, I find yours to be a little more Americana mm -hmm. in some of the yeah. ways that you express different lyrics and different music, a little less so than country when mm -hmm. you think of country. So how has that changed and evolved, and who's influenced you in the way that you've songwritten while you've been there. Okay, yeah, there's, I would say in terms of my songwriting, and I, I, I think about this a lot, as a kind of middle class, all the white kid in Baton Rouge, I, a lot of our problems in life involve love and women and like that, you know, that's what gets every songwriter writing song. I think Paul McCartney has says, we're all just telling them we love you, you know? Yeah. And, uh, so, I'm from when I was a kid and started writing songs as a teenager to moving to Nashville, I, 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 that was my subject matter. It was like, oh, let's write about love, let's write about these relationships and infatuations and heartbreaks. Sure. And, uh, I would I, I would say the biggest transition has been transitioning out of that in terms of writing more about um, the life experiences and what I've learned from life and um, just trying to share lessons I feel that I've been fortunate enough to have, have not have to figure anything out, but learned a few things and um, share more in that world of, um, of songwriting. I, I was very influenced by um, not the, the mainstream Nashville thing when I moved there. I, I didn't have a, a lot of thoughts about Nashville, but Jason Isbell came out and like, uh, was started. He released that record Southeastern, I think in 2012. And I, that record made me kind of reevaluate how 
I could write songs and what was possible in writing songs and um, I just keep trying to write but the, honestly you know not try to try to write anything and just write what is natural to uh, yes. that I know I would say so I find that your lyrics are kind of philosophical right you know <laughs> and I really do like that yeah. because it gives you pause to think yeah. and um, and I always get something different from every song that I listen to more than once. Oh, that's good. You know, because it hits you at different times where you're filtering different mm -hmm. things. And so, um, when you do you start off with an idea more solo and then say, hey guys, whoever you might be writing mm -hmm. with, or your friends, or, mm -hmm. you know, there's a big Louisiana community and mm -hmm. songwriters. Mm -hmm. Hey, I was kind of thinking about this lyric. I was thinking about this ride. I was thinking about this. What do you think? Or is it yeah. more like you just come out with most of it and then they kind of help you polish and hone it. Is it's, it different it's worked different in every, every different way. You know, there's been, my favorite thing is when there's nothing in a, going in and it happens out of the conversation that in the room when you get there and there's not, you know, there is, I do have lists of ideas and everyone does and there'll be specific people that like a melody will remind me of and I'll say, I need to write that with him or, and that, that happens. But the, the, it's most fun when you're having a conversation with someone and one of you says something and you're like, that's cool. Now let's write about that. That's, that's when it's the most fun for me, but it's happened in, I mean, in just so many different ways. Well, I want you to play a song. I'd love to. But I also want to ask you what you've got going on in 2022. What's 2022 ahead for you? 2022 is exciting. I've got a full length record I'm going to record. Yeah. Um, <laughs> going in with a guy named Jared Kay who produces some of my favorite artists named uh, like Rustin Kelly and uh, Lucy Silvis another one mm -hmm. and I'm very excited about that and then I'm excited about um, working with I've worked with um, songwriting with veterans in the last few years and yes. doing working on stuff like that like songwriting for trauma um, and that's near and dear to my heart yeah so and, and pursuing some of the avenues that way is a way to healing arts yeah healing arts yeah for sure. well play something for I will. us okay put something it. new or maybe yeah, something I'll we haven't I'll heard but, but i like your old ones too i'll do a new one this was kind of my uh mm. i guess it was at the beginning of covid mm. before it felt very as serious as it, i guess it ended up feeling mm. uh we did maybe our last friend hang on a porch and uh three of us ended up around a piano and we wrote this song which which came became kind of our code mm. A mantra, so it's called clarity. It goes like this. There's a picture in the corner of the back of my mind, a picture I can barely see. Of a fresh face misplaced, not made for this place. Boy, he looks a lot like me. Windows closed, windows open. Can't go on, keep on going. Learn to shine in the darkness. The path from pain can lead to peace. And when you hurt, don't disregard it. You gotta cut. Through the clouds to catch a peak Clarity Clarity There's a mystery in the middle of the hole in your chest To riddle your dying to solve Pay attention, listen, the thing your missing's been with you all along. The hearts that break, beat unbroken. Cause when hope was lost, kept on hoping. So learn to shine in the dark. All roads from pain lead to peace And when you hurt, don't get disheartened You gotta run through the rain to really see Clarity
That was beautiful. I loved it. I loved it. There's a lot of people that I think are going to resonate with that song quite a bit. I hope so. I think they will. So, David Bournet, thank you for taking a few minutes with us, and I'm really looking forward to uh, sharing some of your songs with others. And how can people find you? Uh, I'm in the wind. <laughs> Look up David yeah, Bournet. DavidBournet.com and all the Instagram, Facebook, all the things. You know. Well, thank you so much for thank sharing so that much, song and, and for uh, being on the show tonight and every year. And we look forward to being uh, really big fans and continuing to support you. Thank you for the support and for this night. I look forward to it every year. So yeah. thank you. Thank you. And we'll be right back with Rocket Right. So David is just living proof of the people that we have. We have more talent per square inch than any place in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, we have so many Baton Rouge and Louisiana-based musicians that have made it in Nashville and around the world, and they're very well recognized, and I'm just proud to be from here. I know it, and I'm glad that you were there and got to catch up and watch the show and uh, talk with all of the guys and see what was happening in 2022 uh, for them. So looks um, like there's a lot of cool stuff. So and our next interview coming up would be Red Anthony Glenmire. Yeah. And so he has got um, some news that he shares with us in that interview. So you'll just have to wait and watch it. And uh, we look forward to, to sharing some more singer songwriters and bringing live music to you because we love live music. Absolutely, and hopefully live music is going to be back. Yeah, we Finally. are back. We're claiming We're it. thinking. We're claiming We're it. thinking. Well, make sure that you go to louisianatravel.com. Find out all the good things that are going on mm -hmm. around Louisiana. And we're just glad to be here. Yeah, and head over to our Facebook page at Rocket Right Entertainment. And if you're going to rock it, make, make sure you rock it right. right. Woo! With uh, <laughs> Bets and me around the state. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a business owner that could use just one more customer? Those empty tables, vacant appointments, idle employees, and expired merchandise are missed opportunities. What if there were a community that connects you to high value and motivated customers, giving you a competitive edge in the marketplace and increasing your revenue? Introducing Partners One. You keep doing what you do best, taking care of your customers, and we'll do what we do best, sending you new customers to take care of. Call us today to find out how Partners One can work for your business. Rocket Right with Betsy Barnes and Dr. K. Solar is brought to you by these generous sponsors. Partners One, Better Barter for Baton Rouge and Beyond. Mary Bird Perkins, Our Lady of the Lake Cancer Center, Selassie Jewelry and Fine Gifts, Advantage Health Solutions with Dr. Boyd Michael Helm, High Tower Dental Concepts with Dr. Leah Larson, City Group Hospitality including City Pork Brasserie and Bar, City Pork Catering, City Slice, City Taco, Rouge Creole, and Beau Soilet. Talent 360 Consulting with Vicki Little. Jeff Taylor, Realtor and Forester with Whitetail Properties. The Third Street Songwriters Festival. Elite Chiropractic with Dr. Ron McMorris. LouisianaIsATrip.com, take one. Thank you for making our show possible. <laughs>